Today I'm going to show you how to make a gigantic and extremely cheap Halloween prop that'll add a very spooky vibe to your front lawn. Ooh, let's get started. This project is seriously one of the cheapest and easiest Halloween projects I've ever done. And it's also up there on the list for one of my favorites I've ever done. I'm going to be using this for an entrance to a haunted house that I'm building, but this is a perfect prop that could just stand alone in your front lawn and would be great for trick-or-treaters to stop in front of and just get a picture on the side of or even inside of it. You'll see. First thing I had to do was get a stack of pallets. Now, if you're not into going around looking for stacks of pallets, there's plenty of other ways to do this, and I'll get to them eventually, but I went ahead and grabbed myself some pallets. I had to break these pallets down, and a good friend of mine a few years back made me this pallet prying bar. It just breaks down pallets really easily, but it's very boring to do, and I'm sure very boring to watch, so let's just throw some pallets at the ground really hard and watch them explode and fall apart. Once I had my pallets apart, I laid them all up against my workshop, knowing that I'd be getting back to this project soon. And lucky me, I was delivering mail the very next day and found a huge stack of 2x4s. This worked out perfect. They're not great 2x4s, but I don't really need them to be great. I just needed something that I could build the frame of this prop with. Now, if you don't have 2x4s, you could definitely use the 2x4s that are inside of the pallets. You're just going to have to screw multiples of them together to make a longer 2x4. So I picked a random angle to screw these 2x4s together. One of them is an 8 foot long 2x4, and then the one on the top is about 4 feet, I think, somewhere around there. Now because these 2x4s overlap, like you can see right there, this project ends up being somewhere around 11 feet tall, maybe 10. I had four of them connected. I took one of my four foot pallet boards and screwed it into two of these boards I had just screwed together. Then I carried this over to my lawn and tried to get it to stand up and it was quite the struggle. I ended up screwing a 2x4 to these 2x4s with just one screw so that I could pivot that other 2x4 and help hold it up. Once I had these standing up, I could bring over my other 2x4s, which I also did that same thing, screwing a 4-foot piece of pallet wood to it. I only put one screw in each side of these pallet boards, so I was able to pivot the uh, 2x4s once I had them leaning. And then I did the same thing again by using a 2x4 and screwing it to these 2x4s to help hold it all up. Honestly, I should have done this before I picked it up, but uh, I'm a moron, so... There's that. Now that I had them all standing up, I went over to my garden shed and grabbed some of these garden fence post spike things. I don't know what they're called, but, and I hammered them into the ground. They have some holes in them, so I was able to hammer them in right next to those two by fours and then screw this to the two by four. This will help hold everything up and make sure it doesn't fall over. I took some random boards that I had and nailed together all four of these pieces so that they would all help support one another. Then I could remove those 2x4s that were help holding it all up. After that I made two more of these matching 2x4 pieces that I could now put on the sides to kind of give this like a bit of a more rounded look. Once I had those boards up I started adding pallet boards horizontally going down the sides of these 2x4s. This is just going to provide me with a spot to nail up the rest of my pallet boards and cedar fence boards. Now a second ago I said that you do not need to go gather pallets for this because you could also just run over to Home Depot and grab some cedar fence boards. I think they're anywhere between two and four dollars each. Luckily I ripped down a fence a few weeks ago from my backyard that was starting to look like crap and replaced it with a new one so I had all these fence boards that I could use for this. If you're going to use pallet wood though I'm not saying you have to buy this but this thing is incredible. It's called an air locker. You place this little hole over the nail, hit the button, and it shoots the nail right out so you don't have to hit them down with a hammer and use all that time removing nails. I went up to the top of this and then screwed one 2x4 as you can see right there down the front in the center only at the top. Once I had that board nailed down and all of my horizontal boards, I could move on to nailing on my vertical boards. I use this blowtorch from Harbor Freight. It's only 25 bucks, I believe, over at Harbor Freight. It hooks right up to a propane tank and it's incredible. But if you don't feel like going and buying that, black paint would work great for this or even just wood, honestly. You don't have to do this. I just thought it would look creepier if it was black. 
Once I had them burned, I grabbed them while they were too hot, burned my hands a little bit, and then brought them over so I could nail them on vertically. Not cutting these and just breaking these really works great for this. It gives it a much creepier look and it gives it more of a bark-like look. So then I climbed up to the top of my ladder and I started making what is gonna be the eyes. I was most excited about seeing what the face was gonna look like, so I started there, nailing these boards on, standing up, and then I could come down with this wood across what will be the nose, and then nail some boards along the bottom to create all of this part of the face. So if you can't tell by now, I'm making an old dead looking tree stump, but a giant one that you can walk into. When it came to the sides and the front where you can walk in, I started using my cedar fence boards because they're much longer and I could nail them on and get a basic coverage of the whole front sides and everything. And then I could go back with all those broken pieces of pallet wood. You wanna put little small pieces of broken pallet wood that are burned to match on top of all of your cedar boards. Like I said, it's an easy project, but it's a time-consuming project for sure. And a couple days later, I ran over to Home Depot and bought some more cedar fencing boards because I just didn't feel like taking apart more pallets, to be honest. I came home after work, laid them all out in the driveway with a bunch of other little pieces of pallet wood, lit them all on fire, and then I could take these boards over to the tree stump and start nailing them on. Once I had all these boards nailed on and looking super creepy, I moved on to wrapping the inside in plastic. I have a pool cover that I'm using for this. You could definitely do the inside of this with wood too, but I figured it'd be easier to just do the whole inside with plastic because I'm gonna be cutting a slot down the back of it so that you can walk through into the haunted house. It's gonna be like an entryway into a tunnel. You could buy a big roll of black plastic. It's in the painting section at Home Depot. It's like a hundred bucks, but it's a hundred feet long and 20 feet wide. It's more than enough to do an incredible haunted house. I've went and bought that in the past and used it. I saved it for years and used it over and over again, but eventually the uh, mice got into it one winter and I had to throw it out because it was in our barn. After that, I just put some lights in it to get a few shots for this video, but I'm gonna be lighting the whole thing up, putting lights in the eyes, and then I'm gonna be adding a smoke machine so that when you walk in, the smoke comes pouring out of the eyes. I might even put a platform in the top because we do Halloween trivia and I always stand up somewhere high and read out questions and throw candy to the kids if they get the question right, and this would be the perfect spot to do that. So, we'll see where I go with it, but anyway, I'm gonna be building a haunted house off the entire back of this. As you can see, those boards coming off the back are gonna be where the haunted house starts. And it's gonna be a tunnel that you walk through, so if you like that type of thing, subscribe and click that notification bell, and uh, until then, I will see you in the next one. Whoa, spooky. Bye, see you again, and have a good dream.